As of lately, being the one with the most free time started to feel more like a curse rather than a privilege to Taichi. Of course, he understood his boyfriends had demanding careers, be it Shirabu's ruthless hospital shifts, Semi's juggling of two jobs, or Hayato's practices and matches, they had a lot on their plates compared to him, and he would never blame them for their limited time together. But as much as he was glad for living in peace now, without the sharp, loud sounds, the more days he had spent having breakfast and lunches alone, the more he hated the ever-present silence that always settled in their flat when everyone left. It brought back memories he wished to forget, but which always filled him with dread of expecting a sudden strike. Today was one of those days. He poked the grains of rice over his plate, any appetite he might have had when he woke up gone. Every movement of the utensils over the plate sounded like a thundering of storm in the silent apartment, rattling with Tai Chi's already strained mind. But about the hundredth time, he glanced at the little sticky note he found stuck to his mug, wishing him a nice day with a little heart at the end. It was the only sign that he wasn't living alone. That, and Hayato's knee pads lying on the windowsill he forgot at home once again. He's going to forget his own head one day. Still, the presence of those two things made him crack a small smile, the silent promise that his boyfriends were going to come back in the evening erasing some of the tension gathering in his chest. But alas, there were many hours before that. Sighing, Taichi pushed through with the meal in front of him, already hearing Shirabu's disapproving voice reprimanding him for not taking care of himself. The last thing he wanted or needed was to make Shirabu upset. No one wanted to be on Shirabu's bedside when he was upset. Our little devil in disguise. A loud bang suddenly echoed through the apartment, startling him out of his thoughts and sending his heart racing. In a split second, a heap of crisis scenarios flashed through his mind, but then a call of her curse sped out by a very familiar voice put a stop to his growing panic. Eita? Yeah, sorry. Didn't have a free hand. Taichi furrowed his brow, confused as to what that had to do with the bank and also by the fact Semi was home. The first one of his unsaid question was answered as soon as Semi shuffled into the living room, carrying two shopping bags in both his hands. Taichi jumped up and rushed to take some of the things from him, earning a grateful nod. Whew. Thank you, dear. You are a savior. Where did you get all this? Semi shrugged and howled the bags on the table before tugging Tai Chi down for a kiss. I figured I could do the grocery run this time since I went around. I might have gone a bit overboard though. A bit was a slight understatement, but the truth was feeding four people was a difficult task for managing groceries. But it led to another of Tai Chi's questions. I thought you have work today. A bright smile lit up Sammy's face. I was supposed to be, but the whole building got closed because of some bug infestation or something. So we get to work from home for a few days. Are you glad? Daichi tried his best to hide just how much glad he was, but judging by the growing smile on Sammy's face, it didn't go that well. Not that it was something horrible for Sammy to know he was happy to have him around, but he didn't want to bother his boyfriends with his loneliness. He didn't get time to think about it too much, though, as Semi wrapped his arms around his waist, laying his chin on his shoulder. Where do you say we go out today? Taichi paused, surprised by the offer. However, a second later, a realization dawned on him. Ahaya and Kenjiro are coming home late today, though. He wished he didn't sound as pathetic as he did, but the truth was, Semi never asked just him on a date. Unless it was all four of them going out, it was always with Shirabu for a calmer date, or with Hayato when he craved adventure. Taichi always felt horrible for being jealous of his own partners and tried to push the feeling away into some deep part of his soul. He truthfully enjoyed their group dates and his own one-on-ones with Hayato, but knowing he apparently wasn't good enough to deserve a one-on-one date with Semi stung. 
Yet, Sammy furrowed his brow in confusion. What does that have to do with anything? Daichi looked away. You have a group date in mind, don't you? No? I'm asking you out. As in just the two of us. But I thought... Chuckling, Sammy gently nudged his side. What? You thought I don't want to go on a date with you? Well, yeah. You... You've never asked just me before. The smile disappeared from Sammy's face. Taichi cringed inwardly, already berating himself for not being able to keep his mouth shut when Sammy cupped his cheek, the touch sending light jolts through Taichi's skin. Tai... Did I make you think I don't love you as much because I'm not asking you out? Taichi didn't even wonder anymore how Sammy figured it out so quickly. Still, he looked away in hopes to conceal the fact that Sammy hit the mark precisely, even when he heard Sammy's sigh. I see. I'm sorry, love. That wasn't my intention. I should have noticed I was hurting you. No, no, it's not your fault. I just need to do better, I know. Better? In what way exactly when you are already perfect? Taichi's mind short-circuited, rendering him speechless for a moment as the heat rose into his cheeks. Before he could collect himself, the tenderest of kisses landed on his lips. Well, let's make it better today then, shall we? He stepped back and took Taichi's hand, the soft smile returning to his face as he entwined their fingers together. Come on, I have a perfect plan, you'll love it. I'll love anything when it's with you. But the groceries... Alright, first the groceries, then we go. He kissed Taichi again, gently pinching his cheek. You need to make sure you know I love you just as much as Hayato does. It's not a competition. It is for today. Now let's get this done. About ten minutes later, they were finally on the way, and Taichi had to admit he would be happy even if the whole date was just them walking around their neighborhood. Sammy had to notice as he shortly squeezed his hand, giving him a soft smile before tagging him closer to his side. It made Taichi blush, but he didn't fight against it in the slightest. He wasn't sure what to expect from Sammy during a date, as both Shirabu and Hayato had very different approaches to what they considered a good date, but as long as Sammy held his hand, he supposed it didn't really matter. The more surprised he was when they stopped in front of a very unassuming door with a simple sign above it. Ceramics and pottery? Yep. I find it like three months ago when I was looking for a gift for my sister, and I noticed the owner offers classes too. So you sign up? Mm-hmm. It's been a great stress relief, I'll tell you that. Oh, I was wondering where that blue vase and the tray suddenly came from. Sammy's face shone with pride. Yeah, those were my third attempts. <clears throat> we don't talk about the first two. His eyes softened. I wanted to take you here for some time already, but I never managed to combine our schedules to make it happen. But today is the day. What do you think? Daichi hesitated. Despite knowing he didn't have to be afraid of Sammy's opinion changing because of one pottery lesson, the prospect of showing himself as completely inept in front of him made a knot of dread form in his stomach. He wished nothing more than to spend time with his boyfriend, but just imagining Sammy's disappointed look scared him. He needed to do better. He couldn't let this be their last date. You are already perfect. Taichi? He snapped out of his thoughts, the memory of Sammy's word chasing away some of the shadows from his mind. He managed to crack a small smile and squeezed Sammy's hand. I think it's a great idea. I just... I don't want you to be embarrassed by my lack of skill. Rolling his eyes, Sammy raised their hands to his lips, leaving a fat light kiss on Taichi's fingers. Oh please, as if that would ever happen. If only you saw how bad I was when I started. Taichi couldn't help the chuckle bubbling in his throat, feeling some of the invisible bounds previously restricting his breathing loosening. 
Sammy smiled at him reassuringly while he caressed his cheek. It's going to be fun, you'll see. I'll help you with my limited knowledge if you need it. And don't worry about others either. Everyone here is absolutely amazing and open-minded. No need to be scared, I promise. And Taichi trusted him. The first thing Taichi noticed after entering the small but cozy workshop was the smell of pottery clay. The distinctive scent briefly returned him to his early childhood, reminding him of the time before he became the black sheep of the family. He chased the memories away, forcing himself to focus on now, on the fact he was there with someone he loved and who also loved him back. Supposed to be a date, not a trip down memory lane. Ah, sami -san, welcome. I didn't expect you to come today. Sami grinned. You know I can't stay away from here for too long, Himari. Oh, I know, but we are really glad for that. Taichi paused when a young woman with long dark hair and bright eyes emerged from behind the curtain, the smile on her face widening even more when she turned to him. And who do you have with you? Sami returned her smile and tucked Taichi a bit closer. This is Taichi, my beautiful and lovely boyfriend. Well, one of them. Daichi froze for a bit, his blood running cold over the fact Sami announced their relationship as if it was the most normal thing in the world. But Himari just seemed even more excited than before, giving him a blinding smile. Oh, so we finally get to meet at least one of your partners? sami -san told us so much about you, I almost feel like we've known each other already. Oh, did... did he? Oh, yes. He always looks so happy and proud when he talks about you. We always get super jealous, though. Proud? Probably talking about Kenjiro, he's... Oh yeah, like the last week when he told us you passed your driving test. I don't think we were ever so invested in someone's driver's license. Teichi stuttered, unable to form a coherent sentence for a while. Semi, one of the most talented people he had ever met in his life. Was proud of him for getting his driver's license? How? Look what you did, Himari. You broke him. Huh? Sammy had his brow furrowed, but there was no real annoyance in his expression. Himari also didn't seem to take it personally and giggled, bowing her head a bit. I'm sorry, that wasn't my intention. But you are here for a lesson, I assume? Indeed. Did anyone book the wheel for today? Not that I know of. Awesome. He tucked on Taichi's hand, motioning for him to follow. I hope you are ready to get your hands dirty. What am I supposed to do with this now? He continued to watch the lump of clay rotating in front of him on the wheel as if he somehow could shape it just with his eyes. A bit earlier, Imari showed him how to work with both the wheel and the clay, and even centered it for him for his first attempt, but now that she went to tend to others, he felt lost again. He didn't mind getting his hands dirty, but he didn't want to waste the clay by ruining it immediately. As if reading his mind, Sammy wiped his hands and got up from his table, a soft smile playing on his lips. Don't worry, it's clay. Nothing will happen to it if you mess it up. You'll just start again. That's all damage there is. He caressed Taichi's cheek with the back of his hand before leaning down over his shoulder. Wet your hands first and then it's just a game of push and pull. Push to the side or down, pull up. That's all there's to it. You are definitely simplifying it for me. Still, Taichi bit his lip and followed Semi's instructions. The wet clay felt slightly strange under his hands, but to his surprise, all it took was a slight push for it to start moving. He was just about to celebrate his little progress when the short clay tower suddenly leaned to the side. His breath hitching in his throat, he quickly withdrew his hands, and then there was nothing saving it from collapsing. He clenched his jaw, trying to ignore Sammy's bubbly laugh next to his ear while his face burned. It's okay. Happens. Taichi sighed, melting when Sammy kissed his temple. Would you want me to lead your hands for the beginning? 
more heat rushed to touch his cheeks, yet he still found himself nodding. He shivered, though definitely not in discomfort, when Sammy pulled a stool behind him and wrapped his arms around him before taking hold of his hands. Okay, one more time then. The closeness of their bodies and the vibration of Sammy's voice as he slowly guided him through the process of shaping the lump into a column, while throwing occasional prints into it, made it really difficult for Taichi to focus on the task at hand. He just wanted to melt into a puddle from contentment. But to his credit, he listened to everything Sammy said, carefully saving the newly gained knowledge into his memory. Even if he was never going to be making pottery again, he wanted to remember as much as possible, if only for the fond memories of this day. And done. Look, you just made your first vase. It was slightly slanted to the side and only vaguely shaped like a vase, but seeing the result of their work filled Taichi's chest with happiness. Can we keep it? Of course, it's yours after all. It just has to go to the furnace first, but I'll stop by for it throughout the week. He smiled and laid his head on Taichi's shoulder, entwining their clay-covered and wet fingers together. You can even engrave something on it if you want. But you worked on it too, shouldn't you? Nah, you have prettier handwriting. It's going to look horrible if I do it. Taichi bit his lip, but then took the carving tool Semi handed him and started to dig thin lines of all of their first names each on a different side to style them into a sort of decor. He felt Sammy smiling next to his ear and his arms wrapping around his waist. Looks great. See? Everything went fine. Nothing to worry about. Nothing to be afraid of. You are already perfect. We all love you. <laughs>